Where, where does this all begin? <sighs> the reason I went out there, man, and held that sign was because I've done all I can do, man. I've done every single thing I can do, man. I put my heart on the line every day. I wake up 4.30 every morning, man. I bust my tail, man. I'm passionate about the game. I'm passionate about my faith. But being that I've done all I can do, one thing that I haven't done is humble myself to the lowest point, man. The very lowest point, man. And, uh, man, I, I, I'm, man, dude, that's the only thing I've, I haven't done, man. And, and that's, that's what you've seen out there, man. You've seen my heart out there, man. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't out there, man, trying to make no one feel sorry for me, man. You know, because I, I have faith. You know, I believe the word of God and that God gives grace to the humble, man. And, uh, and that, that, that's why I was out there, man, going that extra mile by faith, you know, knowing, knowing how much I work hard, you know. And before all this happened, people can go look at my page, man. I've been doing this, man. I've been doing this. This ain't, this ain't just coming out the blue like, oh, or oh, idea pop up, let me go hold a sign up. Nah, man, I've been doing this, man. You better go back, back 30, 30, 100 weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? I'm passionate about what I do, man. And I was out there, my heart was out there, man, just hoping and praying that someone show me some grace, man. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, man, um, you know, I've seen people in this life overcome, overcome trials and struggles many times, man. Uh, Sylvester Stallone, man, he uh, was, was the guy that played in Rocky. He um, pointed his life before he was who he is now. Had to sell his dog for like five dollars, man. Was homeless, sleeping on the side of the road. But nobody know who he was, so the one that don't have a heart gonna point at him, oh, he, he got a homeless sign, man. He, they gonna laugh at him, man, but people don't really appreciate the humble times of your life, man. Everybody in this world, man, I don't care who you is, man, from the GM to the president, man, they done had a struggle. They done had a struggle and they have a family. And they gonna do whatever it takes to provide, and that's what I was doing. I was out there, man, with my heart on the line, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I, I make a vow and to, I promise to my wife and my son every day that, man, we gonna go get it. We're going to go get it when the doubt against us. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to go get it when, when everybody, you know, backing you up, when everybody. But what about when it's dark? You know what I'm saying? What about like Oprah Winfrey when they was turning her around? You know what I'm saying? Do you really appreciate those times? Or do you just appreciate her because she's one of the world's most uh, uh, richest women? You know what I'm saying? They don't know the struggle. And I'm not afraid to allow my struggle to show, man. You know what I'm saying, bro? And there's beauty behind that, man. That gives people hope, dog. And when people see your heart and the genuineness behind what you're doing, like, dog, I ain't no publicity behind that, man. I love this game, man, and I know I can help change some lives, man. And if they don't give me a shot, bro, one thing I'm going to take away from this, man, I inspire millions, dog, by just being me, man, by just letting my testimony, not being afraid of my testimony, man, inspire millions, man, by being a nobody. I'm nobody in, the, in this world right now, man. But in spirit, I'm rich, man, and I know that. So because of that, God had favor over me and allowed people to be moved by that, man. And that just showed me something about this world, man. There's a lot of people that got love in their heart that, that may, you may not see on an everyday basis. But when the presence of God get involved, man, they love will come out so good. How can you get millions of people to, 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 to back me up like that, fans and, and people now wanting to pull for me like that? Man, that's, it takes love to do that. And it, and it takes hate and, and somebody that really don't give up on life to really point the finger and say, oh, he, uh, he, he, he out there. They don't, they don't really understand. They don't understand the grind. It's bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, like, like you said, some people might point and laugh. Uh, yeah. How tough was it for you to you know, go out there, hold that sign up, and you know, potentially have these people? This is your pride we're talking about. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pride. Before I went out there, and actually God, God spoke that vision to me, man. And when he spoke that to me, dude, I laughed at it. I said, man, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a, a person that's here in Houston. I went to college here. A lot of my friends know me. You know, I'm well known around Houston. And for somebody to see, it, it, it really, you have to really sit your pride aside. You have to really sit your pride aside to be able to do what I did. But the thing about doing what I did, everybody has an assignment in his life. Whatever your top testimony, your struggle going to be, Somebody else may not be able to handle it. So what I did, that's why it was so easy to, for people to say, man, I couldn't have done what he done. Because that wasn't your assignment. You know what I'm saying? God gave that to me. You know what I'm saying? He said he'll never put nothing no more on you than you can bear. 
And it's like, even though I was out there uncomfortable, it's like, man, I was discouraged. Like, like man, I was embarrassed. I said, man, dude, I'm talking to myself like, dude, man, homeless people be doing this. Like, man, I said, Lord, help me. Give me strength. Give me strength. I don't know what's coming out of this. I didn't even see all this going viral like that, dude. But I said, man, I, I did go tell my wife. I said, babe, before it went viral, like it did, I told my wife, I said, babe, I got a feeling in my heart, man, that this, even though I'm out there by faith and just this praying and hoping that somebody show me grace, man, and give me an opportunity. I believe that God gonna take this farther than what it really is. So, it's gonna inspire a lot of people. So when this went viral, what mm -hmm. was your reaction? I shook my head. Cause when I seen Brandon Marshall, he's like a big brother of mine. And I did not hit him up and tell him to post nothing. Matter of fact, it was posted before I even posted it. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing about it, man. When I seen him post it and say what he said, that dealt with my heart, man. I said, man, dude, I ain't know I move, you know, through people like that, man. And I just, that's just being me. So anybody that really know me, man, they know my heart more than anything. So if you don't really know me, you're going to look at the tattoos, the muscles. Oh, he out there trying to, man, it, it's, it's beyond that. You know what I'm saying? That was my heart you seen. You ain't see Joe Anderson. And when I seen people like Matt Forte, you know, brothers in Christ, believers, you know what I'm saying, uh, standing up for me, like, man, that, that gave me hope, man. I'm like, man, I can play this game, dude. I can... You know, I work hard every day, man. I go up against the best right now. Right now. Let the Texans give me a shot and see, won't they be like, man, why we didn't get this dude a shot? And I'm not boasting. I'm, that's confidence, man. It's like, man, it's, you rarely find people that got heart. You know what I'm saying? You rarely find people who are willing to put it on the line every day. People always say they want to be like Adrian Peterson and Strong. Man, it take heart to be like that. It take heart, and that, that's, that's what I got. Train with him, and you're going to see a person that got heart. You can't deny that. That ain't every day that you see that. You know, but it's until people like Calvin Johnson understand that, man, I'm Calvin Johnson, man. And that's who I got to be, man. It ain't about people believing it. it. Am I Calvin Johnson? Man, you are Calvin Johnson. You can beat me. It's because he believed that. And then I know I'm Joe Anderson. And that's who I'm going to be. I don't be like nobody else, man. I'm going to be me, and I'm going to walk through my own testimony. I'm going to go through my own struggles, and I'm not going to avoid it, and I'm going to come out on top. And I believe that, and I want to encourage anybody that, that's living in doubt, man, to do the same, man. No don't mean forever, man. No just mean not right now, man. And at the end of the day, man, at the end of the day, man, people that got kids, these GMs, presidents, these, these people in these high positions that got kids, let's just think about it like this. Let's say your, somebody told your kid no. You're going to inspire your kid. Now, don't you listen to that man tell you no. Well, that's what I am. My daddy told me that one time when I was 14, son. Don't you ever quit. I don't care who tell you no. I ran in the house, man, because... Somebody was kind of beating up on me and bullying on me. He said, man, you get back out there. I'm going to hear you tell me you're going to quit again. Man, that stuck with me. I'm 26 years old, man. I got a son and a daughter. And what, what do I look like talking about some quit? You know, this, you know what that son did to my, my son? I didn't even, this, this blessed me, man. Man, I was in my bed, you know, just trying to catch up to everybody. That's, that's, it was very overwhelming. Trying to catch up to everybody that had been in my DMs, man. Trying to make sure, you know, I'm trying to respond with the proper, like, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for supporting me. And, uh... I'm trying to make sure I'm responding to everybody. And my wife said, babe, babe. She kind of wished. She said, babe, come here. So I, I, I came and looked. And my son in the bathroom, man, holding up that same sign, just looking at itself, just holding it up. Man, that dealt with my heart. I, I, I cried, man. I cried. That dealt with me because that showed me that my son is watching my every move. And if I give up right now, man, that's going to give him a reason to give up later on in life when he grow up. But if he see his daddy weather this storm, I'm telling you, man, I'm not only going to bless him, but he's going to be able to be a blessing to somebody else and when his storm comes. Because no matter who you is, you're going to go through a storm. You're going to go through a storm. You either been through one or you're going to go through one or you're in one right now. And right now I'm in my storm and, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and the storm can't last forever. The sun got to come back out. You see it everyday life. When it rains, what happens? Sooner or later that sun come right back out and the rain dry up. And you don't even remember the rain. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just, I just want to be an encouragement and an inspiration to somebody, man, to give hope. To, to be, a, be a blessing to somebody, you know what I'm saying? Rather than just being a blessing by money, rather than just being a blessing uh, by giving stuff to somebody, you know what I'm saying? Just be yourself. You can be a blessing to somebody by being yourself, you know what I'm saying? When did you get this desire to inspire people? Because this, you know, most people don't have, it's not that mm -hmm. powerful of them like I see with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's passionate, man. I mean it, man. It's like, uh, I'm going to tell, tell you something, man. Uh, my sophomore year in college, my sophomore year in college, uh, uh, I was at church, actually, man, and I wasn't really saved. I didn't really believe the word of God like that. I grew up in church, but I didn't really believe the word of God. 
and a prophet was at church, man, and uh, he was going around prophesying to people. I was back there, my friend, I wouldn't even listen. I was back there poking my friend. I said, man, what if he came and prophesied to one of us, man? Like, what if he came and pointed one of us out and told us to run around the church? I said, man, I don't think I can do all that, bro. And he said, uh, man, bro, I know me neither. Next thing you know, that prophet came down the aisle, and it was like 900 people. It was a big church. It was like 900 people. And he pointed at me and said, hey, son, you. So I, I hit that one. I'm like, yeah, not you. Come here. So I, so I tapped my friend. I said, man, dang, dude. <laughs> God tested me that quick, that quick, man. And I said, dang, dude. And I went up to the front. He said, young man, I don't know who you are, man, but God telling me, man, one day you're going to inspire a lot of people, a lot of people, man. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening to him. I'm like, okay. And he said, man, you're going to be a really good football player. I'm like, so I'm like, how do you know I play football? Like, I'm just a college guy, you know, going into my sophomore year. I'm at a small school, so I don't have a big name for myself. And he told me that, man. He said, man, just keep believing, man. Just keep believing. And, and, and it didn't cross my mind until two days after all this went viral. I was laying in my bed, and I called my best friend and went to church with me. I said, bro, you remember when that prophet said, bro, I'm going to inspire a lot of people in one, in one time, bro? Bro, look, bro. Man, bro, this is a blessing, bro. It's like, man, it got deeper than football. It's like, I ain't thinking about football no more. It's like, man, dude, look what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Look look at the people that's, that's, that's being encouraged, man. People people hit my DM saying, man, hey, bro, it's because of you I'm going to hold on, man. It's not me. It's God, man, that's, that's allowing me to be a light, you know what I'm saying, to give people hope, bro. And that's that blessed me, man. That, that, that right there is enough to keep me going. I mean, if I got to, man, I'm, I'll go out there again. You know what I'm saying? If I had to do it all over, I'll go out there again, whether it went viral or not. You know, so. This story is obviously blown up, and you, know, you stood outside Energy Stadium, so the obvious question is, have you heard anything yet from the Houston Texans? Because you told me that they wanted to draft you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, um, man. Uh, I haven't heard nothing from them yet. I haven't heard nothing from them yet, but, uh, man, I pray that they, they give me an opportunity, man, to really at least work out, you know, uh, and that's what a lot of people just hoping for, man. Just give them a shot, cause it's a lot of fans that believe in me, man. And that'll that'll bring some good energy to the Texans. That's to bring some extra good energy, positive energy to the Texans organization by blessing me with that opportunity too, man. And um, you know they haven't given it to me yet, but it's it's 31 other teams as well, man. I would love to play for the Texans, stay here at home, because you know um, you know I got my family here, my home here. I wouldn't want to pack up, but if I have to, I will pack up and go if another team calls, but I'm hoping they do. If they don't, man, you know, I'm still grateful, man, and I'm going to still have my peace at the end of the day. But one thing about it, I ain't going to stop chasing my dream. Man. I ain't stopping for nobody. I didn't stop when, when um, I left Louisiana Tech. You know, before I came to Texas Southern, I was at Louisiana Tech. I was very immature, and um, that caused me to lose my scholarship. Lost my scholarship, I thought it was over then. You know, I was at home for like four months. That was a long time to be at home out of college. Missed the whole season of football. Came in starting as a true freshman at Tech. Uh, missed all 2008, 2007, came in as a true freshman. 2008, I missed all. And I'm, I'm speaking to people that may be going through this right now. You keep your hope alive, man. Uh, missed all of 2008. Stayed at home for like four months. Got discouraged, man. People start telling me, man, go get a job, man. You should just go get a job, man. I mean, they let you go, bro. Just face it. Like, football ain't for everybody. Football ain't for everybody. So I was starting to buy into that. I mean, if I would have bought into that, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And my mama told me, man, that's why you always got to be careful what are you listening to. You know, I don't listen to negative energy. I don't listen to negative music because those things begin to sit in your head, man. You know, what you hear is what you think. What you think is what you become. What you become is what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? And it's because I'm now positive energy to stay around me, positive people to stay around me. And those things are going in my ear. That's keep me going. They keep my heart pumping. Like, yeah, it's still hope. It's still hope. If it was hope for Sylvester, it's hope for me. If it was hope for Oprah, it was hope for me. If it's hope for Jordan when they cut him in high school, because Jordan could have threw the towel in now. Let's be for real. Let's be for real. That's a lot of pressure on the person to get cut, and they tell him he's not good enough. If he didn't have hope, if he didn't have faith, nobody would ever know Michael Jordan. But because he didn't give up on himself. See, Michael Jordan knew that, man, I'm Michael Jordan, man. I don't need nobody to tell me that. I'm going to get back up and I'm going to go back to school the next day, next year. Man, hey, I'm going to try out again. And if they, 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 they wipe me off, then I'm going to try it again. And that's who I am. If they tell me no, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing. Let this person tell me no, I'm going to keep knocking at the door. Until one day, man, that door going to be kicked in. I'm going to run straight through it, and I ain't going to look back. But one thing about these times that make it so beautiful about what I'm going through right now 
is that I'm going I'm to enjoy what God does when he puts me up here because I'm going to remember the low times of my life, man. And that's what's going to make it beautiful of being up here, man, and being an inspiration to, to these little kids in high school and they see somebody, they want to look up to somebody that's real, man. These kids want to look up to somebody that's doing something positive with themselves, man. J.J. Watt, man, he has positive energy, man. It's just so happened that he's blessed to have the talent he has. He works hard. You know, that, that, that's me. I work hard like that. All I need is a shot. You know, I have the same type of heart. You know what I'm saying? And that's what people want to be around. That's why, that's why J.J. name so big like that, because he's just being J.J. You know what I'm saying? He's not afraid. To, he's a big old dude. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't afraid to let his heart show, man. And that, that's what I did on the, outside of that stadium, man. I mean, I'm praying and hoping, man, that they give me a chance, man, because if they do, man, they ain't going to regret it. They ain't going to regret it, man. Yeah, you talked about the low points in your life, and I think mm -hmm. that's a very powerful part of the story. For those people who don't know, what are some of the struggles that you've been through since your taste in the NFL? Man, dude, since my taste in the NFL, man, uh, when I got to the NFL, you know, I came in as an underdog. I came in as a tryout guy. They didn't even want to give me a shot, you know, uh, not speaking bad, but the Texans, they did want to give, they said they was going to draft me in the fourth round. So, you know, I had a draft party at my home, my home, you know, and didn't end up getting drafted. Uh, Chicago messed around and gave me a tryout. They said, oh, you know, I was going to give you a tryout, you know, you know, uh, nothing's promised, just three days, you know, you're probably going to end up back home. I told Chicago, I said, I'll take that. I'll take that. That's all I need is a tryout. You just need to put a helmet and shoulder pad on. That's it to prove to somebody who you really are. So they gave me that tryout, man, and it had like 90 other tryout guys. When I first got there, I'm like, dang, I thought I was just going to be the tryout guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Got all their free agent receivers, 15 free agent receivers. Uh, had a, a rookie receiver, Alshon Jeffrey. You know, he was going to play regardless, draft the second round. Uh, but it's like I'm against all these odds. Like, man, they got 15 free agents, like 20-something tryout receivers, all these other tryouts. They ended up only keeping three. It's because I believed when I got there, I tuned all that out. It's like I had tunnel vision. It's like I wasn't worried nothing about these tryout guys, these free agents. I said, man, I'm going to be Joe Anderson right now in this moment. These three days, I'm going to lay it on the line. I don't care who says what. Slow down, Joe. I ain't slowing down. Three days, they're going to feel me. Them three days came, and the coach was preaching all the time. He said, hey, uh, some, this going to be some of y'all last time playing football. I just got to be honest. Some of y'all may never play football again. Some of y'all may get picked up. I just got to tell you, but I, I tuned that out. I really, I really did this. I did this, man, and sat back in my seat. I didn't want to hear that because I didn't want that negative energy to flow through me because I would have bought into that and believed that. Every day that last day came, <sighs> I tell you, I got the destroying boys, and we went nothing, did nothing but helmet and, 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 and jersey. I'm, I'm trying to run, run people over like, like I, I needed it because I knew that I was from a small school. I'm against the odds. You got these other trial guys. But you got guys from Miami that, that show favoritism to people like that. You got guys from LSU. They show favoritism to people like that. I said, man, I'm a guy from a small school. One thing about me being from the country, man, I'm a hog, man. I won't stop, man. I won't stop. And they seen that. So when they, we broke the huddle, last day of practice, all I said, I said, Lord, if it's your will for me to be here, just let it be. Let it happen. Just let it happen. Broke the huddle. He said, hey, man, glad to have all y'all here. You know, uh, I wish y'all the best of luck, whatever y'all doing in life, man. Y'all keep pushing. I'm broke. I turned my back and walked away. I said, God, have your way. Lovely, uh, one of the people came put their arm on my shoulder. He said, hey, man, uh, I want to see you in the office. So I, I'm, I didn't know what it was. Came in the office. They sent me, they sent me to Lovey Smith's office. And uh, Lovey said, son, something some about you, man. There's something about you, man. Because the receiver coach is there, Lovey didn't even want to take a chance on me. The receiver coach said, man, look at this dude, Phil. Look at this dude. He can be something. I like him. He's hungry. Lovey said, nah, we straight. We already got our free agent guys. Next day, the receiver coach went back in there again. Nah, man, you need to take a chance on this guy. On that last day of that trial, Lovey said, okay, we'll give him a trial. You know, went through the trial stuff. and. Uh, Lovey called me in the office, man. He said, son, there's something, something about you, man. I want to congratulate you and welcome you, <coughs> welcome you to this team, man. He said, man, I see your heart out there, man. And we like that. We need people like that on this team, man. When he told me that, man, that, that my heart started crying, man. 
I said, because I was against the odds, people telling me to throw the towel in, man, but it was because I believed, man. When I believed, man, and I seen the manifestation of believing come to pass, man, you know what I'm saying? And that was so beautiful to me to come in as a tryout guy, beat those eyes out of all those people, put me on a practice squad, humbly worked hard every day on that practice squad. Veterans was upset with me. Charles Tillman, if they need to call him and ask him, Tim Jennings, they can call him that. I gave him that work every day, and that was making them boys better because I knew that these boys were going to go against Calvin Johnson. They was going to go against Andre Johnson and all these people, so I had to get him that feel. And they got upset. Coach, make him slow down. Coach, make him. I ain't no slow down. I want a job, man. <laughs> I want to be here, you know what I'm saying? And, um, but they honored me after that. After, after being there so long, they said, man, you keep working like that. Them veterans started to respect me, man, and I thank God for that, man. And, um, they started to respect me, so being on the practice squad, they promoted me to, 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 to special teams, man. Last three games of the season. I said, I do that. Never played special teams in my life. Never. But I had to humble myself, man. This is a job. I do that. Put my heart on the line. Laid the smack down on Randall Cobb. Laid the smack down on Jock Bell. And these guys that are good guys, but I'm saying I'm pro making production, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it just showed me, like, man, nothing, nothing is impossible. Even though I never played this special team before, it's something you got to want to. I'm a receiver. Love, love to play the game, a receiver. But sometimes you're going to have to humble yourself and do something you ain't willing to do. You know what I'm saying? That's going to bring food to the table. And it's, it's, it take people that got to want to that, that to be good on special teams, man. Well, I mean, you obviously have the confidence to mm -hmm. play in the league. I mean, do you ever wonder why you're currently in the position you are, hoping to get a spot to get another chance in the NFL? Because it's my testimony. It's something I got to go through, you know. Uh, people in life, man, when you, you see them in situations, they have their own struggle. And they may wonder, oh, why am I in this right now? But when they, when they come out of it, they understand, oh, that's why I was in it. It wasn't even about me. It was for that kid that's giving up over there. It was for my son that's looking at me right now. It's for my wife that's counting on me as the leader of this house. That's why I went through it. It's because God trying to use me to inspire other people around the world. That's why I went through what I went through. This is why I'm going through it. God has given me a voice. So now when I get in this position, it's coming. By the grace of God, I pray it does. When I get in that position, I get back on that field, people, I have an image now, man. And I have an image not just, oh, man, he, he didn't give up, but my heart, man. People are going to understand how to really stand on their heart, man, and believe and not buy into what people are telling them. You know, a job is just a job, man. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, there's no pride involved, man. Football is not my purpose. Football ain't my purpose, man. It's just a platform, man, to reach souls. Like, if you're playing football, man, and you're making millions of dollars and it's just about you, who, who, like, well, who are you? You ain't changing nobody's life. You ain't being an inspiration to nobody. You just got a pocket full of money and just a selfish ambition out here. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be like that. You know what I'm saying? I want, to, I want people to see through me like, man, I can be something. I can be that computer technician. And they telling me, oh, you got to go through this. I'm going to go through it. Fine. You know, pursuit of happiness, man. That's who I am right now, man. Well, if you don't mind sharing mm -hmm. so people know your journey, mm -hmm. what are some of the struggles you've been through over the last year and a half or so? Oh, uh, man, um, man um, being cut, being cut from teams, being doubted. Um, three months ago, I was homeless. Um, you know, my lease was up, ain't have nowhere to go. Could have went back home, and nobody want to go back home. So I asked God, I needed to be here so I could train. But we didn't have the funds or nothing like that. But God blessed me and my family, you know what I'm saying? I've been blessed going through this storm. He blessed my church family, man, to receive us, me, my wife, and my kids into their home, man. And that right there alone was humbling to me, you know what I'm saying? That showed me the love of God, man. It showed me that you got people out here that really cares outside of themselves, man. How do you take somebody in that you only been knowing for a year, you know what I'm saying? And let them stay in your house for two months. It takes love, man. And then you can have all these things in the world, but if you ain't got love, you ain't got nothing. And that taught me something along this journey of going through my struggles, getting doubted and, and being homeless for three months. I have a place to stay now. Thank you, Jesus, man. I got me a condo downtown, man. That's all by the glory of God, the grace of God, man. And um, for a very good price, man. And um, uh, man, it's just so humbling, man. Everything I've been through, I don't take it for granted, man. I'm enduring these times that I'm going through right now, man, with all my heart. Because if I do make it, make it big, 
me and my wife and my kids, we're going to appreciate, appreciate everything we have, man. We're going to appreciate when, when we see a penny laying on the ground. Uh uh pick that up. You know what I'm saying? We're going we're gonna to appreciate that. A lot of people don't appreciate what they have, man. And I really want to say this, man, and I want this to go on air. Man, people that's in the NFL right now, people that's in the, in the music industry, uh, uh, video world, or movies, whatever, man, be grateful, man, for being in that position, man. Because when, when these coaches say, hey, son, you need to work harder. There's somebody out there want to take your job. Man, that somebody is me. That's, that's, that somebody is me that's going to be on time to work every day, be the first one there and the last one to leave, that's going to work every day at practice and not just show up on game day, that's going to be accountable to, to, to the situation that's, that's upon, upon hand. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people take it for granted. They go through the motion, oh, I'm a millionaire. You know, and they go through the motions. You know what I'm saying? Man, you better take advantage, man. Act like you never got that, 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 that bonus check. Act like you never got it because that can be taken away from you, man. I've never been a million, million dollar man yet, but I made six figures. Six figures don't last, man, when you got a family, man. When you got a wife and two kids, that don't last. And being I didn't make the biggest name of myself. I took advantage of my opportunity. That don't last, man. And if you're just playing around and you got all this opportunity, man, shame on you, man. Shame on you, man. You know, take advantage. Don't, don't be like that, man. Don't be that guy, man. Now, you know what it's like to overcome the odds and make the team like you did with the Bears. Mm -hmm. So what do you think it'll be like if you make it again, get this second opportunity for some team to give you that phone call and say, come to training camp, we want to see you? The hunger going to be different. I was already hungry when I came in. But right now, God allowed me to go through what I went through, my struggles, my travail. Man, the hunger is, you, you, you might not want to cross paths with me right now, man. Because I take pride in everything I've been through, man. And I'm going to do it out of love. I'm going to bless you out of love on that field. But it's going to be rough for you, man. And, and I'm going to lay it on the line. Them coaches are going to really see my heart every single day. It's like, dude, this kid don't stop. That's what they're going to see. That's what they're going to see. And I'm not just talking. And I hope, man, that, they, that, that it's on their heart, man, to show, show grace, man, for my humbleness, man. Because it's, 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 I'm just showing a sign of, 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 of um, not, not hunger. I don't even want to use that word. I don't want to use humility. That's been thrown around all, all, all week. Um, I'm showing a sign of, of, of surrenderance, man. Like, man, this is my storm. This is what I'm going through. I appreciate my storm and what I'm going through, man. I'm not ashamed of my storm and what I'm going through. And I'm willing to stand out here if I got to stand out here to hold this sign to show you that I'm passionate, to show you that I'm serious, to show you that I'm not just talking and I'm not just, just, you know what I'm saying, trying to move on. Nobody to think that, oh, look at me at a sign. I want to go hold a sign up. Man, I'm passionate, man. I want my son to believe in me as a father, man. If I go to the grave, man, right now, my son gonna remember this. My son gonna remember this, man. I can't go to the grave with no what ifs, dog. I can't, I can't take, take my dreams and things that's still inside of me. Cause I, I got a lot of gifts. Football ain't the only gift that God has given me. I have a lot of gifts inside of me, but it's until I continue to believe and, and unravel those gifts. You know what I'm saying? If I buy into somebody telling me no, I suffocate those gifts. And when I die, that's, that's being selfish to the world because that's something that they, they could have used. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of gifts in the graveyard right now, man. The people that didn't believe, people that just gave up because they said they bought into no. They bought into, oh, man, just, just give up, you know, or just, you know, and, and, and they suffocated their heart. That's why their heart began to be slow. Like, well, man, maybe I do need to go get a 9 to 5. Or, well, maybe, well, maybe uh, the chances to make it in the NFL are, are slim to none. No, they're not. You know what I'm saying? No, they're not. You go be somebody. And somebody that went through a struggle, I'm going to tell you about uh, the, the uniqueness of a struggle. Somebody that's been through the struggle and overcome the struggle, they're going to always encourage the next person that's going through the struggle to keep going, man. Don't you stop. Because they know there's hope in that. But somebody that, 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 that ain't been through it, it's always been given to them, they don't know nothing about that struggle, man. They're just, gonna be, they're just so quick to all wipe them off. Oh, he's another guy. But somebody that's, that's, that, that, that ain't been through the struggle and they had to work for it, but they ain't been through the struggle, it's going to be so quick to, oh, he pulling publicity stuff. Because they don't know what the struggle, the struggle feels like. Man, I'm from the country, man. Texarkana, Texas, man. Texarkana, Texas, man. I grew up in a trailer home, man. Trailer home. I ain't had a lot. I got every reason to not quit. Every reason, man. My mom and dad fought for me, man. They went to bat for me and my little brother, man. My little brother go to the University of Tulsa right now, and I'm speaking this ahead of time. He going to be one of the best college players next year. Watch. It sound fluke. Oh yeah, he just yeah. Every kid think that, but no man. One thing about me and my brother, we got heart. We got heart, man. And it's hard to find somebody with heart. You can find a lot of people with talent. 
You find a lot of people that's just gifted, but everybody ain't got heart in that effort that just won't stop. How that, much? How much would it mean to you, not only to get another shot, but to get to to make a roster again? Man, to get a phone call from a team right now, sir, that'll break my heart, man. And for this past year and a half of going through my struggles and the uh, things that I went through with my family, I haven't even ever, I haven't even been able to cry. I haven't been able to cry, and I've wanted to cry many days, man, because it's hard for a man of the household to not be, not being able to provide for his wife and kids, man. That's that's hard for a man, though. That's hard, and to have your wife and kids stand on faith with you, like, babe, just believe with me. That's hard now. That's hard. Going through a time of homelessness for, for two months. Babe, just believe, you know, we're going to get a place again. That's hard. But when things start unraveling, you know, and going through all this and you ain't able to cry, I wanted to cry. But, man, I believe, man, I'm going to break down in tears, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down in tears but because I've been holding that in for so long. When I was holding that sign up, I was holding that in. It's like, man, dude, I'm at my lowest right now, man. I'm at my lowest, man. But it's, it was until I humbled myself at the lowest point. That's why everything happened the way it happened. That's why that went viral like that. You can't just get a guy. To, anybody can go out there and hold a sign up, man. Anybody can go out there and hold a sign up, you know, hey, you know, I run routes for food, or hey, man, you know, you know, give me a shot. Anybody can do that, man. But if it ain't genuine, it ain't going to move nobody, man. That's why that moves millions of people, because they see my heart, rather than just seeing Joe Anderson standing there, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the deal is, man. And when I get this shot, I know it's going to do something to so many people that's, that's, that's man, they, 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 I may be the only thing that's, that's, that's hopeful for the, to them, man. To that high school kid that's watching this, that middle school kid that's watching this, I may be the only hope for them. So to see me get my breakthrough, that's going to do something to them, man. They're going to probably want to go work out right now. Like, man, oh, man, he got a shot. There ain't no such thing as doubt. Man, you, man, no, we're going to believe, man. Look what happened to Joe Anderson. Now I'm a Sylvester Stallone story. Now I'm an Oprah Winfrey story. Man, I got hope, man. I'm pursuing a happiness story right now, man. And I'm enjoying it. I'm appreciating it with all my heart, man. All my heart, man. <laughs>